Welcome back to the Rolling Rucks. We're Stu, Charlie, and our three kids, Oliver, Dexter, and Amelia. We've taken our motor home on lots of adventures over the last 15 months. We've visited some spectacular places. But now is the time to see if we can convert this two-year-old crafter into a fully functional camper van that sleeps all five of us. We're doing it from scratch, learning as we go, giving it our blood, sweat, and tears. We want a gas-free van with a shower and a toilet and as much open space as we can get. Join us this week as we continue the build. So this week is going to be a full-on week. We've just arrived at our workshop, which is going to be our home for the next three weeks. Expect to see some massive changes on our van, taking it from a panel van into an actual five-seater camper. First things first, let's give you the colour reveal that you've all been waiting for. Morning guys, it's half eight in the morning. The day has finally arrived when we're gonna get some rear seats in the van. So as we mentioned before, there was a bit of a delay and it wasn't the brilliant guys who were fitting it. It was actually getting the frame that's needed to be fabricated for the seats to sit on top of. So in the new crafter, the floor's 155 mil higher than it is in the rear. So what we were trying to achieve is obviously have the rear seats level with the front seats because we want to put a table in between them that's our seating and dining space so i am at camper family cymru these are the guys who are going to be fitting the seats so i'll take you in we'll have a look at the frame and the rough position they're just sort of starting to get going now this is the frame we've had fabricated and that's been done out of the 25 mil tube stuff and then they've mounted the the base rails for the seats so we're just working out now positioning sort of depth ways and front to back because when these seats obviously turn around they're going to be a bit further towards the front and then we want to get a table then in that area so that we've got somewhere to eat. So the seats are just here, they've been keeping them protected looking after them. So in true fashion where the seats are going the exhaust box is right underneath so these boys have got their work cut out for them. Right so they've got to take the exhaust part, a part of the exhaust down because it's right in the way of where they need to get underneath it. So there's four lads in there working and I did spy a burger van on my way in so I'm gonna treat them to a bike and bap. So I'm with Dan and John, both neither of them want to look at the camera. Come on boys, say hello. <laughs> hello. So I got John and Dan, these are the guys fitting our seats. So we've had a little bit of luck with this. The actual frame which the seats sit on happens to fall over one of the chassis cross members. So they're using these high tensile bolts, really big thick things. They're able to go through the seat plates, through the metal base that it's sitting on, through the floor and then also through this chassis cross member. So something's on our side today. How's it going John? Yeah, it's going good. Just trying to figure out exactly the position of the seat now. As you said, we've got a couple of beams running underneath that we need to hit or miss. So we're just trying to figure out what the best way to go about that to give it some structural integrity as well, I guess. I'm here with Rob at Camper Family Cymru. I got it right that time. What do you do here, bud? Uh, just general converting vans. People come in with the, the vans and uh, they sit with John design there, go through, it. go through it all and then yeah we crack on basically. And then do you do a lot of like the smaller things like if someone say wanted a diesel to fit in? Yeah we do it, we do it some bigger and small jobs so yeah happy we're happy days. to take on anything. There you are, so they're based in Barry, South Wales, so if you need any small jobs or big ones, give them a shout. So this is one of the vans that has come into Camper Family Cymru and this van's actually only a few years old. 
but in one hell of a state. The guys brought it in, there were some damp issues. Basically, whoever fitted the roof rack didn't do it properly and the water's coming all the way through, all the way to the floor. So all the floor was rotted, all the sides was rotten, mold in all the carpet, water absolutely everywhere. So these guys are stripping it right back, gonna get it cleaned up and gonna redo it. So I've had to go up to Swansea. It was about a two hour trip there and back to pick up these M12 high tensile, I don't know what they're called, they're fully threaded. Uh, the other ones were just a little bit too short when they went through sort of the cross member. So now these can be cut to size and we can get these seats in. We got seats. All done. Frame to raise it to match the height of the seats at the front. These are a little bit higher at the moment, but that's because the swivel plates that will go onto the front seats are gonna raise them as well. So almost perfectly aligned. Boys, you did a good job. Thank you very much. <laughs> We'd like to thank this week's sponsor, Top Test. Top Test have sent us out a gas leak detector device so i've opened it up i've had a little look at this thing what i do like about it is a couple of things so the first thing was that look how small that is nice small light can go into any drawer put it aside and i thought the amount of uses or number of times that this would have come in handy for us like when we had to change from the british to the european gas bottles when we were in france and I had to change all the regulator i bought like the gas leak detector spray and that would have just been so handy because you could just turn it on, put it around the appliances or the hoses and see if you actually have a leak. So let's have a look at it in action. The device has three buttons on it. You've got your on off button at the bottom, low sensitivity and high sensitivity. Now when you turn it on, it does take about 20 seconds. It calibrates every time you go to use it and that takes about 20 seconds. And it says you have to do that in an area where you know there's gonna be no combustible gases. So that's just calibrated itself. And I will test it, see if it works. Okay, so our hob has one of those like instant ignite. So I'll light it up, blow it out. <laughs> so that's now leaking gas. And if I put the pen to it, it's picking it up straight away. Now that's the safety device on the hob has just turned itself off. And as the gas is dissipating, yeah, it's drawing back down to nothing. We tried this all around our gas bottles to see if, obviously we had any leaks, nothing at all. But when we try it with gas, it picking it up. One thing I really, really liked about this was not only is it a really good safety device, which obviously when it comes to gas, I don't think you can ever be too careful, is the price. The price on it is actually really, really good. $29.99 on Amazon. We've also got a spare one and we're going to do a giveaway on it. So head over to our Instagram and we'll release details on that soon. We have an Amelia up the front. Hey! <laughs> that can only mean the seats are in. We're in the crafter. We're heading off up to Western Supermare. We're going to get some supplies. So what are we getting today? Well, we're checking some bits out. We may pick up the bed frame. Um, we're going to pick up the diesel heater and the water heater. I'm just gonna have a general nosy while we're there. And if I get my way, we're definitely gonna end up in IKEA as, at some point as well, whether that's today or tomorrow, because we've got to go to V Dub tomorrow. Um, there's some bits that need sorting out under the warranty on this. Um, we do need to get obviously a mattress and some slats for the bed, some kitchen bits, some girly decoration bits. So yeah, it's exciting. But the biggest thing is that all five of us are actually sat in the crafter. For the, for the first, first time. time yeah so we've made it to cjl leisure in yeah, western so supermare these guys specialize vw conversions they do the transporters and yep. the crafters they're also doing a few of the mans because obviously they match the new crafters so we were coming up basically to look at their bed they um, do the bed frame for they, us for at the back yeah we've got these like pod 
What's that called? That's like called a like a stretch, support it? stretch, yeah. So we got to cut this out, and to cut that out, we need to put another one in to get that strength in that area back. Yeah, so they, um, they basically do the bed for that, don't they? They do, yeah. They've very cleverly designed and manufactured all this, and mm. it also goes in with a bed frame. So it's like, yeah, perfect. Nice and easy, job done. Yeah, we've um, been, discovered a bit of a problem, though, haven't we? Well, in regards to space we now have available, now the seats are in. Yeah, so... I knew the measurement for the bed roughly so we've come up here obviously to get that exact and we now know exactly where that falls to yeah the problem is is the new seats have got in are uh, the bottom of them are in a good spot but because there's a lean on the rear seat that lean is obviously bringing it into the space where we planned on putting the triple bunks yeah Hmm. So, to a point where we can't do triple bunks um, we've only now got whereas we had 1700 we've now only got 1550 cost 150 mil yeah which certainly doesn't account for children no. growing so. so that's it all of us already at 1500 yeah so we've got 50 mil we're now looking at two options we've got <laughs> option a is to go back to our original design where we've got the double bunks at the back yeah um, bigger kitchen shower on this side which is like I said, we originally planned yeah, that Yeah, that was, that was our very first layout. Or we are looking at another option where mm. we're going to put in, similar to the motor, you know you've got the dinette with the two seats, bench seats facing each other and you've got the table in the middle. Yeah. The table goes down and that creates a double bed. So I was like, right, boys can sleep on that. Have, Sorry, go on. Have our bed still at the back going with ways, but we'd have to put pods in and do a little bunk underneath our bed for Amelia so that we lose some garage space, but, but it would be it'd be bigger than having two double bunks at the back. Yeah. So we're just costing it all up at the moment to see how we're going to move forward because huh? if we go with this new one again. I think it's going to be a bit more expensive, but mm. it does also mean... The price you pay for a garage. Yeah, a huge <laughs> redesign on the whole van again. Basically, so. it means that we have to start from scratch because we have to change the seating in the front from a double to two singles. So you get your captain's chairs. Yes. And then you need to put in a dinette. So the seats that we've just had fitted and all those problems with the welding, it means we need to take all that back out. Yeah. So at this rate, guys, this van will be built in 2000 and never. <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll just say we're just going to price on it. I'm happy to go back to our original layout with the double mm. banks at the back. Yeah. That's, you know... That's what, the most cost effective Basically then, us, everything think. that's happened on the van, other than my bathroom light will need to come back this side, everything else can stay the same. We're yeah. good on everything else. Yeah. But I like to keep my options open and see what's what so we're just about to get a price for this other layout yeah. and see where it's we're at with it so we've just got back to the workshop after a day picking some bits up day shopping we did we picked up our bobble heater and we visited cjl leisure as well now they had some fantastic ideas up there the things they have is incredible on the way back me and Stu decided to have a conversation about what we were actually going to do with this van build because i think after seeing all of those vans we kind of lost a little bit of sight about what we wanted to do but what we actually thought was you know these vans come out showroom style and you know we have a motorhome already uh, that is showroom style this van build was initially a case of us doing something for ourselves and having that homely feel and creating something that was original and something that we could be proud of so we've decided after all these little thoughts about should we change the layout again and you know obviously we were a little bit stumped when we realized we couldn't then fit the triple uh, the triple bunk in like we'd originally hoped because the seats do lean back i think we kind of it spiraled then into what should we do different then how are we going to change it we kind of felt like we went back to the beginning all over again so i'm glad now that we've come back saw our senses and thought to ourselves no let's just go back with our original plan it does mean now that we have to have double beds at the back but on a positive note, that does mean that we get to face out the back windows rather than trying to squeeze sideways. It also means the kitchen is now going to have more room and it means that the shower and the, bath the bathroom area can actually be where we originally planned for it to go. There is also going to be some extra space for another cupboard there, so hopefully design something for Pebbles. I want Pebbles to have his own place in the van, that he doesn't need to feel like he's being squashed in anywhere. He'll have his own bed, his own place for his food bowls and stuff like that that Stu can just design there's you know it's going to be our own stamp so I'm looking forward to that and we're literally just getting stuck in with that idea now so that we literally can't change our minds again <laughs> so we've had to take the seats off our welded 
support strut whatever you want to call that um, because obviously the floor has got to go down around it so that's where we're at The first go on a choppy, what do you think, Laugh? Scary. <laughs> The seats are in, the floor's down, happy with that. Yeah, it's good, it's really good. Have you already done your greasy? Yeah, I've done it on that side, it says to do it on both sides, so I've just done the underneath, so I'm gonna do the outer. So spare in the... I, mean, that's, I can't be much more sparingly than that, but I'm going to use the whole sachet. Well, they might be overloading it. <laughs> Is there such thing as overloading? There you go. Too fiddly. A little bit, yeah, I'm not going to lie. But Just where it's, it it's simple, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's just simple enough. Right, that's hit the nylon now. But see this, then... Oh yeah, it comes down quite a lot, doesn't it? That's this out. is in the closed position. You take your four lock nuts off, which are these things, and then you literally do that. Gosh, that's low. And then, that allows you... To spin. To That's spin really it good. like that, and then once you've spun it, you then will put it in the position. In the Enclosed position, it. I can't do it a minute because I've got this fitted very loosely. Yeah, you've got to put all the screws, all the and screws, and all that in as well. Yeah, I've got a shed load more of more nuts and bolts here, which are obviously for something. Well, don't they go in then? Well, that bottom plate is already. Oh no, you know what they'll be for, don't you? No. Well, I gotta fit the seat onto the top plate then, don't I? Oh yeah, no! <laughs> right, okay. That's what they're for. So let's lock that up, get it in the down position, put the lock turns in, so that's nice and solid, and then we can refit the seat using those. Nice. That's all right, that is. Again, that was quite an easy task. I know it's a very clever how they've done it though. It is, yeah. Because I mean it is neat. bespoke, isn't it, for this fan? Yeah. And I got a nice gap underneath the bottom plate here to run my cables over to the battery as well. So Lush. I'm happy with that because I can come right through here and straight, straight into the battery box right there. Yeah. But for now. Come on, let's, let's get, get on this, with it. Let's get this top nut fitted. Right, so spinning them things off is a little bit like an I'm a Celebrity challenge, isn't it? <laughs> spinning them really, really fast, yeah. Yeah. But um, we've got to fit the seats with it in this position, haven't we? Yes, yeah, because you've obviously fit in from underneath, so we'll bring the seats over, put them on, fit them while it's in the race position. It's not going nowhere, it's nice and solid. Um, once it's fitted, we can then lower it, and to lower it, you've got to lift the cushions up, but we'll get to that in a bit. You're still licking that body. Yeah? Still licking that body. Yeah, you can't even see, right? It's one of those <laughs> annoying ones, right? You can't even see the cat. Yeah, every time I look down, I got blood dripping down my finger. Yeah, you know right now, need. look, not bleeding. So that's the seats in. That's all the bottom plate and top plate fitted. Now I'm gonna show you how you turn them. So, you gotta take the rear headrests out. Come to the front, pull the seats up, and then you lift like that. Put the seats back in, and it should, it says, Something. 
done that bottom nut a little too tight. I was just gonna say something's not right. <laughs> yeah, I've done the bottom nut just a little bit too tight, I'd say. Take two. Take two. I've done the bottom nut joining the two plates together a bit too tight. So, I should bring them up. Boom! Nice. So comfy. That is actually. I don't think. I, I mean, this is obviously Amelia's seat. But that is. Five seats. Dinette. There's plenty of space for you. Plenty. So we've taken the headrest off just because the height of it knocks the centerpiece at the front. Yeah, you might be able to put them back on. Yeah, but. I don't know. It, no, you can't. It is a little bit fiddly, but, but not. It's the only thing, the only way it can be done. It's yeah. the only thing that's on the market right now that allows you to swivel both the front seats in the new Shape Crafter or the Man TGE, where it misses the fuse board. You haven't got to do no major moving of things or altering of things. Um, I had one plastic trim to take off, so because it was a trim that that trim that goes underneath the fuse board you know it was easy what yeah. was that again an hour to fit it not even that i don't think no so i'm happy with that so rnj campers i'll put the description down below if you're looking for the spinning seats and you've got the single and the double they do the kit so they both work with each other these seats are all level with each other so when we put our table in everyone's sat at a nice height yeah I mean the extra seats now, you wouldn't even realise were extra seats, would you? They look nice, love. I'm really happy with that. Well done, love. Living on the edge. That was quite high. Yeah, but you bear in mind I'm raising the floor, but yeah. Oh yeah. I was gonna say I'm gonna need a step, aren't I? Yeah. Are we gonna box this part in as well to hide? Yeah, there's gonna be a whole new floor for there. Yeah. And then we'll also get a duct, heating duct on there as well, love. Yeah, I think have a table by here and then maybe a little side one for me, you know, for my wine. I'll be yeah, quite happy by it. You're happy with that? Yeah. Good job, love. Oh, we didn't do too bad in trying to match the chairs up, actually. They don't look all that different, do they? No. So, for anyone who's wondering, the seats that we've put in the rear are Ford Transit seats. Are they? Um, yep, they're from the custom buses, wherever they're called, Tornios or something. Found them on eBay, didn't we? Did find them on eBay, yeah. Uh, fan seating specialist, based up in Yorkshire. They were about 500, 550. Yeah. Um, the swivel plates we got from R&J Campers. I can't remember the price. They were up in York as well. But yeah, so I know for the double seat base, it's not on their website yet, but if you give them a call, they can run through pricing mm. with you. Um, they were really good. He ran through everything with me. Anything's like bits we had to cut out. You know, he said you have to take the headrests out. So there were no surprises. We mm. knew exactly what we were getting. So I appreciate that. So yeah. thank you guys. They even gave you an instruction leaflet, didn't they, to take away? Yeah, so. you get full instruction manuals with them as well. And but to be fair, they really are easy. He said it's four bolts on the single, mm. and it was six on the double, and then they're all replaced with new ones when you're fixing the seat back onto the plates so it really couldn't have been much easier could it no we <laughs> hope you've enjoyed watching us install our seat in yeah yeah um it has obviously made the van start looking like a camper now hasn't it well that's it we've now got not one not three <laughs> but five, five. seats <laughs> and they're all facing yeah. e or they can now all face each other so yeah. that's our living room pretty much done and dusted there's a bit of trimming to happen and said i'm yeah. going to raise the floor so join us next week we think we're going to take a look at the diesel heater and the water heater yeah quite a re it's a really cool system and the heater system's the first out of the factory it's brand new so we're going to run through that with you but until next time guys we'll see you in a bit until our guys